Hello, everyone, and welcome. We're going to get started in just a couple minutes. Hello, everyone. We're going to get started in just a minute. If you want to say hello in the chat box, let us know where you're joining us from. All right, hello everyone. I'm gonna go ahead and get started. So hello and welcome. Um, thank you for joining us today. Uh, your phone line is muted. This webinar is being recorded and a link to the recording and slides will be shared. Hello and welcome to our webinar, Fun and Healthy Summer Recipes with Applegate and Celebrity Chef Kate Winslow. My name is Leslie Gabay Swanston. I'm the Director of Program and Systems Quality at the National Summer Learning Association. Before we get started, here's an overview of our webinar today. First, I'll show a little bit about NSLA and, and Summer Learning Week for those of you who are unfamiliar. Then we'll hear from our featured guest. And after that, we'll have time for uh, audience questions and then wrap up with some announcements. If you have any questions for um, any of our guests, uh, if you have any questions for Kate as we're going along, please put those in the Q&A box. Uh, we'll monitor the chat box, but uh, it's a little hard to see questions there. Um, so if you have any questions, please put those into the Q&A box. So first, I'd just like to say happy Summer Learning Week and thank you for joining this virtual event and celebration. Uh, for more than 25 years, NSLA has advocated for summer learning as a solution for equity and excellence in education. And summer couldn't be more important than it is at this very moment. We know that summer is a time of great inequity for young people and we believe that promoting and supporting summer opportunities is a way to address this. America's children and their families continue to face extraordinary challenges this summer amidst COVID-19, the COVID-19 pandemic. That's why NSLA is calling on all our partners and families during this Summer Learning Week to help us elevate why summer learning is essential to the nation's recovery and to each do our part to keep kids learning safe and healthy. So each week of NSLA's National Summer Learning Week is focused on a different summer issue from literacy, STEM, and the arts, to the importance of nutrition and wellness, to programs that introduce young people to career possibilities and civic engagement. Your participation sends a powerful message across the nation that summers matter, and there are many ways you can engage this week by visiting our website, summerlearning.org, forward slash summer learning week. You can, there you can check out the theme days and resources for summer learning week for ideas and inspiration. We're encouraging you to take action to protect funding for summer and after school lear learning programs. Um, community members can contact their federal, state, and local representatives to communicate their support. 
you, you can share your favorite summer learning memories or planned activities with our Summer Matters Social Media Challenge and use our Outreach Toolkit to help amplify the message that summers matter. You can also text NSLA to 9199 to make a donation to NSLA. Links to all this can be found on the Summer Learning Web Pages, uh, Summer Learning Pages, Summer Learning Week pages of NSLA's website. Today, I'm happy to welcome a valued partner in this movement to keep kids healthy, Kate Fisher, Senior Associate Manager of Communications and Strategic Partnership um, Activation at Applegate Farms. We know that summer is a time of great inequity for young people. This includes access to healthy meals. Healthy bodies and healthy minds go hand in hand in stemming summer learning loss. And without the structure and resources that the school year offers, children are at greater risk for weight gain and unhealthy eating habits during the summer months. Summer is the perfect time to savor the favors of seasonal fruits and vegetables to avoid summer weight gain. Applegate is the nation's leading natural and organic meat brand and joins us as the official sponsor of today's summer learning theme, Eat Healthy and Grow Strong. So with that, I'll turn things over to Kate. Hi, everyone. Um, hope you can hear me. I'm so excited to be here in honor of Applegate and to be talking to you about who we are. And we're very, very excited at Applegate to be partnering with NSLA. It's a great organization, and this week is a great opportunity at opportunity for us to get involved and help all of you with some easy meal solutions and just provide a little more information about why our products are so important, especially for um, nutrition for all ages. So as Leslie mentioned, we are a natural and organic meat brand. Our mission is to change the meat we eat. And a lot of our products are high quality natural and organic meats like hot dogs, um, dinner sausages, deli meats, and a lot more. And today you'll be able to see some of those products in the cooking demonstration that Kate's going to be um, going over. So what does that mean? Why are our products higher quality? Well, we like to think that we offer clean, cra craveable food that's made with nothing artificial, no GMO ingredients, no chemical nitrates. And we work with farmers at um, uh, humanely raised animals with no antibiotics ever. That's really important to us. All these different standards really is the differentiating factor for Applegate products. And what goes into that is that as a brand, we really put taste and health above all. That really helps us make the products that we do. And it becomes a certain lifestyle, and we like to call that an Applegate-tarian. So what is an Applegate-tarian? It's people who consciously choose clean, craveable meat for ethical, environmentally responsible, and delicious reasons. So hopefully, after the demonstration, you'll be able to understand what it is to be an Applegate-tarian, and we hope that you'll want to be an Applegate-tarian yourself, so the next time you're out at the grocery store, you'll be able to pick up one of our products, um, and Kate will have some great recipes that you can use those products with. So without further ado, let me introduce you to Kate Winslow. She works a lot with Applegate. We work with her very closely. She is a published cookbook author. She's a great chef, food stylist, really wears many hats within the kitchen. And I think you'll find her recipes today really, really enjoyable. So Kate, take it away. Am I on? No, you're on. Okay. <clears throat> Um, thanks, Katie, for that introduction, and thanks, Leslie and the NSLA for having us today. It's really an honor to um, get to do some cooking for you. Um, I'm working in a kitchen in New Jersey. That's where we're located, and um, the idea of summer learning is definitely very close to my heart. I come from a family of teachers, um, so education is always very important in our family, and we're definitely in really crazy times, so I'm really proud to be working with NSLA right now. Um, to be helping everyone out. Um, so we're going to be running through a couple very uh, straightforward, simple recipes that are great for getting the kids involved in the kitchen, um, ways to sort of minimize food waste in the kitchen, make sure that you're getting really healthy, filling, protein-filled meals throughout the summer and throughout the year. Uh, we're going to do one breakfast recipe and a lunch or dinner recipe. Uh, the first one we're going to do are breakfast burritos. And 
my husband and I, and if you hear someone in the background behind the camera, my husband's here just helping out with some tech stuff. So if he pipes in, that's, that's who that is. Um, we used to live in New Mexico, which is the land of breakfast burritos. And we've definitely brought them back to New Jersey with us. We love eating them. Um, one of the things I love about them is that they're very transportable. Uh, we have a 14 year old son who uh, is very busy, plays a lot of basketball or did before all of this was happening. And, you know, to have a fridge full of breakfast burritos, early morning basketball tournament, we could just take them, uh, heat them up in the morning and uh, have something good to eat on our way. Um, what I also like is that you, everyone can make their own. You can customize it however you like using whatever sort of uh, proteins, starches, cheeses, things like that. Or leftovers. Or leftovers. Um, so they're very individual and um, you can make them ahead of time. So what I'm going to do is um, you might be able to see here if guy shifts the camera down a little bit. We have a bunch of different fillings, um, possible fillings. We have some Applegate bacon. Uh, we have some leftover potatoes. We have some leftover. These are things that we've had from dinners the last few nights. Uh, some salsa from our tacos last night. Some, some cooked zucchini. I don't know if this is this, this salsa. Um, some broccoli, peppers and onions, some beans, breakfast sausage, and shredded cheese. Um, one thing I, I just want to make a comment about the cheese, which we always add to our burritos. Um, it's always cheaper to buy a block of cheese and shred it yourself rather than to buy pre-shredded. So it's one thing that I always do and I just shred it on my own. Um, we always use eggs generally in our burritos. So that's the one thing I'm just going to be cooking right now is I have uh, four eggs. We're going to make three different burritos, just sort of showing different kinds of combinations that we can do. So I'm just whisking these together. I'm going to get the skillet hot. And these will just take a couple minutes. I'm just going to season with a little pinch of salt and pepper because all of the ingredients that we're adding to the burritos are pretty well seasoned already. So we don't need to add much salt or anything to the eggs. They're going to pick up all the flavors that are, that are already in the other ingredients. So um, usually when I'm doing burritos, if I'm making several at a time, and right now I'm going to make three, so I'll usually do one egg per burrito and then throw an extra egg in. So you get a, so it's a little bit one plus. Um, so a little bit of olive oil. And once this is hot in the pan, I'm going to swirl the oil around there and the eggs will cook very quickly. So, and I'm just doing, um, I generally just do scrambled eggs. I find it's the easiest way um, to cook a bunch of eggs at once. If you like to do a fried egg or uh, a poached egg or something, you can. Um, and when I'm cooking, I have a, this is a, a nonstick skillet. I just sort of bring the eggs in, let the raw eggs flow underneath and keep going until everything is cooked. So we're going to do um, one burrito that is made with bacon and potatoes, uh, some cheese, hot sauce, and that would be for my son. Uh, we're going to make another one that has some cheese and broccoli, eggs, um, some potatoes in that one also, and some breakfast sausage. And maybe that will be for my husband. And then I'm going to also make a vegetarian one that's going to have some of our leftover beans, and some peppers and onions and zucchini. So you can see these eggs are almost done. I mean, I think we eat a lot of eggs in our family and I think eggs are one of the best things you can always have in the fridge. They're very inexpensive. Um, if you have eggs, you can always make something for breakfast. You can always uh, make something for lunch or dinner. You can have hard boiled eggs to have in the fridge as a snack. Um, we often make frittatas for dinner, which is just um, eggs that are poured into a skillet with some kind of, you know, whatever vegetables we have, maybe a little bit of leftover meat, chopped up ham, something like that, a little bit of cheese. It goes in the oven. It's sort of like the filling of a quiche, but without the crust. And um, yeah, this is all done. 
And it's just a super fast and very nutritious quick dinner. So, okay, our eggs are cooked. I'm gonna grab, let's see, my first tortilla. So I always, I like to use big flour tortillas. You know, they make wraps out of all different kinds of things right now. Um, so if you have a, a particular one that you like, just use that. Um, I like it to be big enough that I can get plenty of filling in there. So I'm gonna take some of this egg and stick it right there in the middle. A little bit of cheese on top of that. So we'll do potato first. And, you know, often I'll make these the night before if I know we're gonna need them in the morning. Sometimes, um, and you know, if you refrigerate them, they're good for two or three days in the fridge. Otherwise you can freeze them and then they're good for quite a while there. Uh, two strips of bacon on top and a little bit of hot sauce because my son likes things spicy. So we'll drizzle there and then the fold. So I go insides, the sides first in and then tuck it in like this. And there you have it. So I'm just gonna wrap it up. And then I always like to write on the outside, especially if I'm doing a bunch of different ones that have different fillings. I'll just write my son's name, potato, egg, bacon. And these are great to batch cook for the freezer. Exactly. For later. And um, and then you can you could just fill up you know, a, a big Ziploc full of these, be able to pull them out. Um, obviously, if you're gonna microwave them, you gotta take them out of the foil. Otherwise, we often just throw them in the oven and we'll heat them up that way. Um, you can also take them out, put them in a pan if you like to get the tortilla a little bit crispy on the outside, which is really nice, and do it that way. Okay, so that's our first one. Our next one, I'm gonna take a couple Applegate breakfast sausages these are chicken sausages and they come fully cooked. So I'm just gonna chop them up and put them in, knowing that whenever I reheat this burrito, they'll be able to um, get hot. So I'm gonna get my eggs in here and add, whoops, add my sausages. They like to roll around. Some cheese. And I'm gonna add some potato to this one too. The cheese acts as a little bit of a uh, sort of a glue to help bring it all together. Some of these potatoes. And again, all of these items here, for the most part, are leftovers that we've had. And so it's a great way when you just have those little tiny bits of things left over in the fridge, put them in a burrito, put them in a frittata, don't throw them out. Find a way that you can keep them and, and use them again. Um, this is a little of this salsa verde. If you had a jarred salsa, you could use that too, um, or chopped up tomato. The one thing I don't like to put in a burrito, that, especially that I'm refrigerating ahead or uh, freezing, is avocado. It just doesn't, it doesn't uh, last well. It doesn't reheat well either. So again, sides over, and whoop, roll that up. You want to roll it snugly, like this. Mm -hmm. um, you want to roll it snugly, but not too tight that the uh, tortilla breaks. And then, so this one, I'm going to write potato, egg, sausage. So burrito number two. And then our last one, is um, we've got some of these nice beans here from the other night. And I'm gonna start with these. If you have some leftover rice, that's also really nice. And I know here we're using the Applegate bacon and the breakfast sausage, but if you had leftover pork tenderloin or leftover chicken, leftover steak from the night before, you can totally use that. Um, it's really up to you, whatever you, whatever you like, you can add it in. There's some peppers and onions. And what else did I want? Oh, I wanted to add zucchini to this one. So there we go. 
a little bit of sauteed zucchini. We're going to add our egg in here. This is one that would be really tasty for lunch too. And that's the thing about breakfast burritos. They don't have to just be for breakfast. You can have them whenever you like. So a little more cheese. And then you fold it up. You can kind of tuck it in. That one got a little full. That one's good though. Yeah, that one's big, but that's okay. So wrap it up. And this one I'm just gonna write veggie on. So, you know, you see with, you know, this is seven or eight different fillings. You could really make dozens of different kinds of combinations here, which is really fun to do. And um, like I said, again, they're just great, um, a transportable meal, something, you know, you could get the whole family in here. Everyone can make their own if they like. Um, you get, the kids can help with prepping these vegetables. They can prep with, help with shredding the cheese, um, getting the foil out, wrapping, you know, spooning everything in. So it's a great way um, for kids to participate in their meal. So we're gonna clear this stuff off and I'm gonna get ready for the next recipe, which are uh, these summer skewers. So let me set these things aside. This one, doing that we had a quick question. How long would you yeah. How long would you reheat the burrito in the oven? If they are in the, if they they've been refrigerated, I would should heat them up about 15 minutes. 15 minutes probably under 50 degree oven. Um, if they're frozen, they're going to take a little bit longer, probably about half an hour. Hour, but you could take um, if you want to stick a knife through, even if you could stick a stick a rail, let it go to the center of the burrito and just feel it, and you'll if it feels hot, then you know it's warmed all the way way through. So, um, so a grilling recipe, which, you know, right now it's summer grilling. It's great to get outside. Um, it's about, it's about 95 degrees outside right now. So right now, so we're going to do this one. Outside. Um, and you, a very quick and very colorful summer skew recipe. So let me, let me bring these ingredients over. <clears throat> this is, um, a really fun, colorful way to also get the, get the kids involved if you like. Um, um, because we're skewering beautiful, beautiful um, squashes, green zucchini, yellow squash. We have nice red onion and beautiful cherry toma tomatoes. I mean, all the time, the, farm the farmer's markets are to explode, explode with salt, fruits and vegetables. So it's a great way to just see what's in season, buy, buy things locally. Um, you know that you're supporting lo local farmers. You are getting things that things that probably have not to do with pesticides um, and you know other chemicals. So it's I think especially right now it's 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 um, a really good thing to if you have if you have a, a great market near you to serve you to serve. Um, we're also going to be using uh, some Applegate chicken and dinner sausages as well as some dogs because it's it's fun to skewer as it turns out. So I'm going to get this grill going and well, let's see, let's get these things finished first. So one, one thing when I'm skewering, skewering, it's, you know, you see, you see a lot of picture bobs that have a piece of meat and a cherry tomato and a piece of meat, you know, sort of, sort of a mix of all the things on a skewer. It looks nice, but it actually, but it actually cook very well because all of those things cook at different rates. And so I prefer to um, skewer everything being the same on one skewer. So, so I have all my yellow wash, all my zucchini, all my cherry tomatoes on one, and I need to get a few more onions on here, and all my onions on here. Onions, are, onions are going to take a little bit, so I want to get those on those on first. Um, but this way, you have more control as you're grilling. And as you see things are done, you take them off, make make room for a little bit more. More. So let me get this on. On. So this is a nice nice grilled pan that covers two uh, uh, two on a stove. Oh, before this gets hot, it gets hot. And what's nice is the other side is flat. So on one side you can put, put lots of pancakes or grilled cheese sandwiches or quesadillas, quesadillas, something like that once. And 
and on the other side here as a, a grill. So, oh, and also I want to men mention um, using metal skewers. These are um, skewers at a grocery store or usually buy them around this time of year. If you don't have metal skewers, you can use bam bamboo ones, also readily available available at the grocery store. If you're using using bamboo ones. You definitely want to make sure that you soak them for at least 30 minutes in water before you put, put them on the grill, because otherwise they're just going to burn and burn up. So um, um, soak a little can of water, water them stuff on, and put them right on the grill before they dry out again. So let's see. I have a little bit of olive oil. And I just want to just want to brush the, the veggies with that. And we're going to season them with a little bit of salt and salt and pepper. And um, um, then we're also going to make, while well, everything's grilling, we're going to make a yogurt sauce for dipping to go along with this. So that's a nice, nice, very nice accompaniment. So again, just, just doing a brush of olive oil on all of these guys. I'm just doing an example for each of these. Um, what's nice about this, about this kind of recipe is you scale up for, how, for however many people in your family. Uh, just do enough skewers. I would probably do one skewer, um, you know, maybe half, half a skewer of each of these things per person. And so you can just uh, do as it's involved with the math to figure that out. There's a little echo, so just say, I'm sorry, just come, come to me. Oh, okay. I just told me there's a bit of a bit of an echo, so I'm sorry. If you're kind of you're kind of hearing me come out. So again, I'm just going to do a little pinch of salt and pepper on these. And then they'll go on there. So a little bit of pepper, pepper, and some fresh thyme um, or some other fresh herbs. I could add them on here too. too. The, or if you have a, a you know serenade that you like a lot, like a lot, it sweeps a little bit hotter. Um, you could marinate these for a bit if you like. But while we wait for that, I'm going to start skewering sausages. So this is a sausage with spinach and feta, which is really nice because these are sort of um, summery Mediterranean flavors. So this is a good switch to go with that. that. Um, you can also, also find other, other sausages. This is a fully cooked sausage, so we just want to cook it long enough to warm it through and get set some nice roll marks on there. there. So these go, these go on. We don't oil these. They'll be fine. And then we're also gonna skewer some hot dog dogs. So let's see. There we go. Now that's getting hot. So we can put these on. We'll see what, what, how much we can fit here. Somebody asked if the recipes are vegetarian. vegetarian. Um, but this, I think what's also nice about cooking skewers this way is if you do have vegetarian band members, you're not making meat in the veg. I mean, here, I mean, here, I've got the meat touching here. You can just skip the meat altogether. We can just cook the meat separately, a separate time from the grill, and then it's totally. Um, but it's sort of a nice way, nice way to make everyone happy, happy, meat eaters and vegetarians alike. So with the hot dogs, we could cut up. I have some that are cut up like that. We can also go a little bit towards them. Um, this is kind of fun to do. It's just skewer the whole hot dog, and you can put it on like this. And kids can eat them from the skewer once they cool down a little bit. And that's sort of a fun way without a bun, um, a way to serve those. So we can do one like that, and we'll skewer some like this as well. So while these cook, we'll get going on the yogurt sauce. If anyone else has any questions right now, I'm happy to answer them while I'm putting these hot dogs on. So we do have a, a couple questions. Um, can you do the skewers in the oven too? You know, I would do them um, if you if your oven has a broiler. That's going to be the the part that's going to make it. Sort of the most grilled because you'll get a little bit of that uh, charred sort of flavor. So I would do it in the broiler if you can. Otherwise, you could just yeah, you could um, throw them in the oven, roast them at a high heat. I would say 400, 450, 
and you'll get, um, they'll cook pretty quickly and that will taste really good. So let's see, this is not the biggest grill pan, so we'll sort of get what we can on there. Okay, so while those are cooking, let me bring over the yogurt stuff. So this is, I, I love making this yogurt sauce. Um, it reminds me in some ways, let me grab a paper towel. Um, in college, I worked at a Greek restaurant. And so I ate lots of tzatziki sauce. And it reminds me of that. And I just find it super summery, very fresh tasting. Um, and it's a nice accompaniment to grilled foods, grilled meats, grilled vegetables. Um, and it's really easy. And I think it's also, it's a, a nice change from, you know, buying something. This is something you can make very quickly. You can put your kids in charge of this. They can make it. Um, so let me, let me just show you what it takes. So I am using uh, some Greek yogurt. I'm going to take about, I'm just going to eyeball it, but about a cup, three quarters of a cup. And I like Greek yogurt because it's nice and thick. Um, and then once you add some lemon juice, it thins down enough, but it still will stay thick enough that you can dip into it. Um, I have two scallions that I'm going to chop up and add to it. So I'm just going to slice these. Here, I don't know if you can get that out of the way so you can see. Can you see that okay? Mm -hmm. So if you don't have scallions, you could chop up a, or grate a little bit of onion. Um, or grate some garlic. So don't worry if you don't have scallions, it's fine. I think what's nice about this is that it's very adaptable, so work with what you have. So these are just thinly sliced. I'm gonna add that in. And we wanna add some lemon juice. So even though the yogurt is nice and tart, a little bit of lemon juice kind of rounds out that flavor. So I'm just gonna we'll start with about the juice of half a lemon and we'll taste it and see. And I think that's um, one thing that's important as you're cooking and especially with kids, you know, taste as you go along. Taste and, and find out how you like your food and have your kids taste it. So they taste the different steps of it. Like, hmm, this tastes good, but it's, it's too lemony. I think it maybe needs a little more salt or it needs a little more herb and let them just play with it. And, and they'll probably come up with something more delicious than you could ever imagine. So, okay. Okay. Um, as we're you know, keeping an eye on the grill here too, the cherry tomatoes are gonna cook much faster than anything else because you don't want them to totally fall apart and collapse. So we'll pull those off first. Going. Guy's got his eye on the hot dog, which is great. All right, so I'm gonna add some lemon juice to this. Um, and this is also the kind of recipe that I think just seems so summery. And it's, you know, we talk a lot about eating the rainbow, um, which is a, a great guide to make sure that you're eating well, like you're reaching for the most colorful food you can find that grows in nature. Um, cause you know that it's packed with vitamins. It's just really good for you. So you're reaching for red cabbage, you're reaching for beets, you're reaching for carrots, bright red tomatoes. Um, and that's what summer is all about, you know, eating this colorful food. And, um, and I think kids can get really excited about that. One of the things, um, I think Leslie is going to share with everyone, maybe at the end of all of this is, um, I also came up with a list of children's books that are all uh, focused on food and eating and cooking. And I think, um, you know, that also ties into that eating the rainbow sort of concept. Because I think when kids are very young, um, they really can get so excited about food. And we want to encourage that interest and that, um, you know, that desire to really experiment and play and try things out. Because kids want to do that. And I think um, seeing that in books can be really fun for them. And then you can follow it up by bringing them into the kitchen and cooking together. So 
And I think, um, you know, I've been, I've been cooking for a long time and I've been uh, uh, writing recipes for a long time. And I think one of the things kids, you know, when kids are learning to read, and I feel like I'm going a little bit into a tangent here, but something I've been thinking about, um, when they're very young, they're learning to read, but then at some point they're, they're reading to learn. And recipes are one of the first things that you can really, a kid can, can see and say, oh, wow, I'm, I'm, I know enough to read and I'm learning how to do something now. And that can be a really fun, exciting thing for a child to realize they've gotten that proficiency to be able to learn something new. Okay, I'm still making my sauce. So I'm chopping up some herbs. I've got some fresh mint. And I'm going to add that in. And I've got some fresh parsley as well. I'm going to add this too. If I didn't, if I only had parsley, that's fine. If I only had mint, that's fine. If I only had dill or basil, I could use those or cilantro. Whatever you have, whatever you like, you can use. So, I mean, that's how I feel a recipe should be in a way too, that you should be able to work with it and, and make it your own as you go. Okay, so now we've got this. Let me turn this down. How are these guys looking? Very hot. Very nice. All right. Let me flip. Okay. So now we've got this. I'm going to get a little closer so you can see how pretty that is. Bring it up here. Over here? Up. Up. Yeah. All right. So here's our, our sauce. You know, this um, is going to be delicious with these vegetables and the grilled sausages. I'm going to add a little salt and pepper. Um, but it would also be great with just raw veggies, you know, carrots, bell peppers, sugar snap peas, something like that for, for you to dip into. Um, if you had grilled pita chips or grilled pita bread, this would also be great with that. And a lot of kids love the bell peppers and carrots and sugar snap peas because they're a little sweeter and yeah. they're super colorful, so they're easy to grab. I know, let's be honest, our son loves candy. He loves colorful things. He does. When those carrots are out and peas, he'll totally just grab those too. Right. So instead of sort of reaching for um, chips or some kind of salty or sweet snack, if you can have lots of raw veggies ready to go in the fridge that are easy to grab or grapes that are easy to grab, cut up fruit that's you know ready to go. Um, it's just as easy to reach for that as it is for the Sour Patch Kids. So. Especially while you're cooking dinner and the yeah. kids are hungry, it's a little something to snack on as opposed to getting the chips out. Yes. And they'll definitely grab what's there. They will. While they're waiting for your, your dinner to be done. All right. I'm going to call these done so we can pull these off. But one thing I was thinking also um, that would be fun if you're making this on a summer night for dessert, you could do uh, fruit skewers as well. So you could do, um, you know, squares of pineapple and cantaloupe and honeydew and watermelon and thread those all on skewers. You can make a, a version of a dip that would be like a sweet yogurt um, that you could dip stuff in. And it would just be a fun skewer themed night, if you like. So yeah, you can just add yogurt, a little maple syrup, and then get them, mix it up. So let's, um, you know, if we were, if we were actually um, serving this for a larger family, of course I would have more of these skewers, but this is what we're fitting on for right now. So just imagine it's um, a little more bountiful, but it gives you an idea. So I'm going to put our sauce here in a bowl, and then I'm going to transfer the skewers. Here, so you can see the tomatoes are getting. You might lose a couple to the cause, but that's okay. And here, we get our zucchini. Bring it over here. Okay. And there we go. All our onions. And then, of course, if you have leftovers from this meal, you know what you can do later on with it. You can turn them into breakfast burritos. <laughs> so we just kind of go full circle. There's our skewered hot dogs. There we go. 
Um, and you can leave things on the skewers. You can strip them off. These are hot, so I'm going to let them cool off for a couple of minutes before I do that. But this would be, um, you know, like I said, just a great, easy summer grilling recipe. It will only take a few minutes on the grill. The prep work, the kids can help out with it. And I think everyone's going to be really happy with it. So, um, so those are the recipes that I had to demonstrate. I'm happy to take questions at this point. I'm going to just clear this a little bit. But Leslie, Katie, whatever questions you guys want to share, I'll do my best to answer. Thank you so much, Kate. Um, so we do have a couple questions. Um, one was they wanted to know the title of your book and where it can be found. So I can put a link to one, at least one of the books in the chat box. Um, and so they wanted to know about using Applegate products. Do you use Applegate products? Oh, um, well, the, the second question first, yes, we definitely use Applegate products all the time. Um, some of our favorites are the bacon. They make, um, you know, just as a great addition to breakfast, we make BLTs with them. Um, the dinner sausages that we just used are great. And also the deli meats are fantastic. They have um, especially a pepperoni and a salami that we love. Uh, we make pizzas a lot and we use them all the time. There's a no sugar ham that is great if you're trying to cut added sugar from uh, your diet. That's fantastic. The, I think the turkey doesn't have added sugar either. Um, uh, there's also a no sugar bacon. So same thing. There, there are lots of different choices. Um, and they've also just come out with a new product that's called uh, Well Carved. That's a combination of meat and veggies. So it's not a totally plant. They're, they have burgers and meatballs. It's not a totally plant-based um, thing like an Impossible Burger. It's a, it's a real combination of meat and cauliflower, uh, butternut squash, sweet potatoes, spinach, um, lentils, beans. So you're getting this super protein, veggie-packed uh, combination that's really, really good. So we love those. Um, as for our, our latest book is a book called uh, Onions, Etc. And it's a book that's all about alliums, the onion family. So chapters on garlic, uh, shallots, red onions, yellow onions, sweet onions, leeks. Um, and it you know, encompasses recipes from all over the world. My husband and I work together. He's the photographer and I do the, the writing and most of the recipe development. So um, that's our latest book. Um, I have a question about GMOs. And I think this might be for Katie, but Katie, you can jump in as well. Um, they, they wanted to know uh, what's wrong with GMOs or why it's bad. I think Kate, Katie might have mentioned that um, Applegate doesn't use GMOs. Yeah, I can jump in. Can you hear me? Yes. yes. Okay. So at Applegate, we, you know, we err on the side of caution when it comes to GMOs. There isn't a lot of information out there about it, or there's a lot of conflicting information out there about them, but they're genetically modified organisms. Some farmers use them on crops or they use it for the feed that the animals would be eating. And it just, we don't really know what they can do for the long-term health. So as an organization, we decided to meet the Applegate standard of what we believe in, we decided to not use any of those ingredients within our products. So I hope that helps the answer. You can definitely do a lot of research on GMOs. There's a, you can go down a long, dark hole with a lot of information from different scientists, different brands. Everyone has their own opinion on it, but that's what we believe at Applegate. Um, and similarly, we had another question about um, what makes Applegate organic. So we work with um, third party organizations for various different standards. So organic being one of them. And that just means that there is no GMO ingredients in our feed. The animals are treated humanely raised and we get a third party certified organic seal for our products. Um, Again, a lot of information out there on the web about it, but that's really what organic is defined as. And then Applegate takes the next step to ensure that our products are humanely raised. So you don't see this on our pack, but if you go onto our website, you can learn more about how 
our animals are humanely raised. And there's two different certifications out there right now. One is called GAP, it's the Global Animal Partnership. And that you see a lot, Whole Foods, that um, grocery store, if you're familiar with it, they're the ones that started that. And that just means that um, someone comes in and does an audit on the farm and make sure that all these different standards are being met. But then we also work with another one called Certified Humane, and they as well do that. Um, they just check up on the farms to make sure that there's no inhumane treatment, they're getting enough space on the farm, enough air and light, and all those different standards. Okay. Um, we have a question for Kate. What are your kids' favorite summer meals, and what advice do you have to encourage cooking and learning together this summer? Our son... Like I said, he's 14 and we are lucky. He's a, he's a very good eater. He's a very adventurous eater. Um, so we have been fortunate in that. I would say right now, gosh, guy, I mean, maybe, corn on the cob with well, Mexican corn. yeah, we're doing a lot of sort of Mexican street corn. Um, so taking corn on the cob, which is just getting into season here in New Jersey, um, doing like a light spread of mayonnaise on it, rolling it in cotija cheese and sprinkling it with some lime and cayenne. Um, BLTs. BLTs. We like, um, in our family, we actually do a lot of, um, I call it condiment cooking or um, sort of meals where everyone can kind of customize their own, sort of like those breakfast burritos. But when we sit down at the table, it's not like everyone has a plate and it's sort of three different things, you know, the three same things on it. Um, if we have tacos, everyone makes their own tacos and they're gonna be some different salsas, cabbage salad, maybe a little corn salad, some chopped up tomatoes, some chopped up mango or other kind of fruit. And so everyone can really make their own. And I think he really likes that because he gets the control of making exactly what he wants. So we just try to put as healthy a array of stuff out there and let him make the choices knowing that we're fine with whatever combination he's gonna make out of that. So, um, and we do that for, what else we do? Um, like rice, bowls. rice bowls. Um, and that's a really popular dinner with him. We'll cook salmon, we'll make some rice, we'll have a cucumber salad, salad and again, maybe kind of mango or, mango or avocado, some, some cut up uh, strips of seaweed, seaweed, sesame seeds, seeds, Italian, different hot sauce, hot sauces, and everyone can make their own, make their own bowl. And it's, um, it's just something that Emily really likes. I guess, likes, I guess, I think we all have control over our own food. <laughs> so we're, yeah, BLTs are big right now because tomatoes are beautiful yeah. in New Jersey, everywhere really. Fresh mozzarella sandwiches yeah. with, with tomatoes. So. Good, good summer and stuff. Yeah. Great. Um, so I, 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 I recipe in the uh, Q and A box, and also the book. And I would point out the back of the code at the bottom, the bottom, or coupon or coupon. Where is it? There's oh. a, at the bottom of the list. I believe. I believe there are, are the recipe list. Yes. Code for oh. folks that will find that. You can just turn it through. Let's turn it up. It sounds like it's up in the QA box. Yeah, there's definitely more information they should in the QA box. I'm not sure from our end, and Leslie heading in and out a little bit. So, um, but I think the recipes are going to be going to be posted there as long as long as, as, as yeah, that post. Hopefully, you can hear the coupon. There's a, there's a coupon at the bottom of the recipe. Um, Right. Um, I think that's all the questions, all the questions right, now. right now. So I think we're going to wrap up. Thank yeah, you thank so you. much, Kate. Um, um, if there's anything, there's any last thing that you want to share? Okay. Anything with your, with your favorite book? Um, I, think, I think it's good. I, um, I, 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 if any way, if, if um, you have any other books that you would that you would like to have this list of of, of food, I would love to hear them. So maybe maybe let's um, share out our share out our web something that a way to get in touch because I would love to keep adding to the end of this the books because I want to share to other people as well. So um, let's know what your favorite children's children's foods are, please.
Okay, I think I'm going to try the audio of here. Is that a little bit better? Uh, keep talking so we can hear you. Let's see. Okay. Um, so we're going to wrap up this. Okay. Uh, there is a coupon at the bottom of the recipes. Uh, There's uh, the PDF that was shared in the, the, um, in the chat box. Um, so, just going to wrap up with a couple uh, last announcements for everybody. So, uh, as I mentioned before, at the beginning of the webinar, um, this week is Summer Learning Week. Uh, so please join us for any uh, some of our additional our other upcoming events that we're having. So tomorrow we're having uh, two webinars, um, one focused on youth leadership and entrepreneurship uh, featuring the Mott Foundation. And, and we will also be having a, another webinar tomorrow on leading, leading in a time of change, leadership lessons from nonprofit leaders of color. So hopefully you'll be able to join that. Join, join us for those. Um, you can find out more information about those on our website, summerlearning.org slash summer learning week. Um, as I mentioned before as well, the link to this webinar will be uh, sent out and shared with you all, along with, with links to the resources that were shared. Um, this week we have merged our Popular Voices of Summer webinar series with Summer Learning Week. Um, but also look out for more in, in this series to come throughout the summer. Um, and you can also look back at past webinars on our webinar page. Um, finally, be sure to follow us on social media to keep updated, up to date on uh, new releases, uh, resources, uh, follow the hashtag Summer Learning and Summer Learning Week. Um, be sure to sign up for our newsletter on our webpage. You can join special cohorts of peers interested in topics like sports, literacy, or youth employment. You can also find out more about our consult consultation support and technical assistance for your summer program. Um, I want to say thank you again to Kate and Katie and Guy uh, for joining us and sharing this recipes today. I'm hoping if you uh, learned something new um, that you can look up maybe tonight um, and we will be in touch. Thank you. Bye.